are here to speak for or against a project. Your time will be limited to three minutes, so take some time now to summarize your comments because three minutes goes by very quickly. Uh, following the public comment period, the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal, and then the public hearing will be, will be closed. The only comments which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in response to any questions from the commissioners. <laughs> The commissioners will then discuss the case and will make their decision based on the city ordinance, chapter 27 of the city zoning code, the design guidelines, the Secretary of Interior Standards, Historic Preservation Development Review, or HPDRC comments, and the testimony given at the public hearing tonight. Please remember that the ARC can only act on items that are within our specific jurisdictional responsibility. Owners and or agents are independently responsible to obtain any appropriate permits and or approvals. approvals. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do silence your phones. And I will ask my fellow commissioners to introduce themselves starting on my left. My name is John Prokop and I practice architecture. Dan Myers, I'm an architect. Stephen Sutton, I am also a registered architect. I also hold the architectural historian chair for this commission. Brent Taylor, and I'm a general contractor. And with us tonight, we have Dennis Fernandez, Alexis uh, Guzman, and Dana Crosby Collier, our city attorney tonight. And we move on to conflict of interest. Good evening, commissioners. Um, Dana Crosby Collier from the city attorney's office. Would like to inquire if any member of the commission has a conflict of interest with any item on the agenda this evening. I have none. I do not. Thank none. you. And does it, has any member engaged in an ex parte communication related to any item on the agenda this none. evening? I have none. none. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, we don't have any monitors. Sorry about that. That's okay. I didn't even notice that it went blank. <laughs> uh, moving on to continuations, uh, there are no continuations. This out. This is off. Uh, on the agenda for this evening, so we can move into the swearing. Anyone in the audience who's going to be presenting this evening or giving testimony, please stand and raise your right hand for the oath. With that, we're ready for the first case this evening. <clears throat> Dennis Fernandez, Architects Review and Historic Preservation Manager, going to provide you a photo essay and introduction for the first case on the agenda, which is ARC 23-122. Uh, this is a request at 1802 West Jaton Avenue in the Hyde Park Historic District. Just to orient you, can you can you see that on your monitors? Yes. Okay. Just to orient you, the subject property is located within the boundaries of the local and national district in Hyde Park. This is an aerial, give you sort of a bird's eye view of the structure. It's located on the corner of Jaton Avenue in South Fremont, and it is situated. Uh, on a corner lot w in which the vehicular access is off of Fremont. So you'll see that in the photo essay. This is the 1929 Sanborn map. It is showing the contributing structure with an accessory structure. Take note of the location of this accessory structure. In 1929, this accessory structure was more interior to the lot. The current structure is, as I said, abuts the street, fronts the street. However, it is designated as contributing, so it was just built a little after 1929. This is the front of the uh, primary structure, very nice craftsman-style bungalow. Uh, the owners went through a lot of work to recently restore this bungalow. I'm sure the uh, the agent will be telling you about that. This is the west elevation. You see the uh, camelback pop-up. 
This is the abutting neighbor to the west, so that's just across that driveway to the west. Moving back to the east, there's the east elevation. Accessory structure is going to be just catching the roof of it there in the corner. Looking across Jatan to the north, this is the structure that faces the uh, front elevation. Moving back onto the site, as you move around to the rear of the property, this is the existing condition towards the rear. Back into the street, this is Fremont. Looking towards the north, the uh, structure that we're talking about is, as I said, accessed off of Fremont. And this is back down towards the south. This is the uh, contributing accessory structure. And then some of the side of that structure. Uh, contingent on the demolition being approved, there will be new construction of an accessory structure presented to you. So I uh, just wanted to show you some of the conditions of the rear yard. This, there, there's, there is a swimming pool that abuts the current uh, accessory structure. And then you see the rear of the primary structure. Back into the alley. See the subject uh, structure here on the right, and then the alley as, it, as you look towards the west. So as I said, this is a request for demolition. So I'll ask the agent to come and present their request uh, for the demolition, and then um, the new construction. And you'll have to determine if the demolition can move forward before we consider a motion on the new construction certificate of appropriateness. Thank you, Dennis. Good evening, Commissioners. Jim Lloyd, last name L-L-O-Y-D, with Lloyd Craftsman. I'm a contractor uh, representing the Wagamans, who are the homeowners at 1802 West Jatan. Um, we're going to discuss the uh, well, we, it's, a, it's, it's currently a garage, but it's kind of a glorified shed. Um, Dennis did mention that the, the sample and maps did show it in a, a different location. Um, I don't know if it was moved at some point uh, or when it was constructed, but it, it is a, a, a contributing structure. Um, I'm kind of just going to go down the list, uh, you know, for the, um, the demolition requirements here. So. The homeowners would like to use, uh, would, would like to have, enjoy the use of a two-story accessory structure that's similar to the majority of their neighbors in Hyde Park. Um, the existing structure is smaller and significantly shorter than a standard garage and has a garage door that's too low for anything taller than a small vehicle. Um, an addition isn't feasible due to the location of the garage on the lot. Variants would be necessary to add on to the garage um, as it's uh, 2.3 feet off the rear of the south property line. Uh, and if the variance was approved, fire code separation would eliminate, uh, take effect and eliminate overhangs, which wouldn't be in keeping with the fabric of the main house and would look out of place in Hyde Park. Um, as it relates to the height of the garage door and the garage ceiling itself, uh, the existing door has a clear height of 77 inches when it's open, uh, which a small SUV wouldn't even fit. Um, plate height of the structure is short, so there's low uh, ceiling height in there as well. Um, this is a photo of the existing structure. The homeowners, uh, when they moved in and did some work on the main house, they had to actually shore up a portion of the structure because it was falling down and they did put a, a new garage door in. And they also uh, capped the slab uh, just so that they could use it for storage. Um, but the existing structure, even as it is, floods. Uh, the property is graded towards the side street, and the garage is actually in the way. Um, the, uh, there's, I got some photos here. Of this kind of shows, you can kind of see, you can kind of see the shininess on here. That's actually water that was in the garage. Um, and it's also showing water 
intrusion in the garage. Um, the uh, original slab of the structure, like I said, was capped. We actually, the engineer and I visited the property the other day and actually were able to dig on the exterior of the property and noted that there was actually a four by four wood foundation with the concrete on top of it and then studs from there. So there's actually no foundation um, on the exterior walls, um, which obviously wouldn't support a, um, a second floor. Um, the cap was poured around the, the studs, which you know is not a great design considering it's still prone to water intrusion and it's going to rot. Um, <clears throat> they're in need of the homeowners are in need of more space for their family. Uh, they work from home and would want to add a second floor to be able to have an office. Um, the uh, let's see, right, the bottom plate studs below grade, etc. So that's it's just not it's not. And I I have let's go through some other photos here. So this is kind of showing the um, you know condition of some of the studs. <laughs> I can kind of have it like that. There we go. There's a lot of framing issues. Holes and siding. And these are some of the older members. And then this is showing the concrete that was poured around the uh, existing wood. And then this is showing obviously some dilapidated siding and um, that the uh, that the, the bottom floor the, the first floor of the garage is actually on grade and then I've got the engineer's letter here stating that uh, he determined that the existing foundation and framing is uh, insufficient to support the second floor uh, wood studs extend below grade. And their space at 24 inches on center. Foundations constructed of wood material require replacement to support a second floor. Uh, the majority of the structure would need to be replaced, and so not much of the original structure would remain. <clears throat> and then uh, get into the section 116, so the burden of proof. Um, the only alternative to demolition as it relates to this request would be to not demo the building, which would result in a significant economic hardship um, to make the building usable as a garage and structurally sound to be able to support a second floor. Uh, it cannot be retained on site uh, as lots in this neighborhood can only have one accessory structure. So if we built another accessory structure, obviously we can't do that. Uh, moving the building obviously isn't feasible as it's got concrete slab and then a wood foundation under it. Um, if demo is approved, the existing building will be removed and a new structure will be built uh, as soon as the city approves the permits to do so and construction is expected to be completed within six months. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, our position is that the demolition is justified as an economic hardship. So I've got in the analysis um, cost to remove the existing structure. Uh, the cost to remove the existing structure and foundation demo cost would be $2,500. Um, it'd be the structure is functionally obsolete, so it would be necessary to significantly rehab the structure in order to make it usable as a garage. And I've got a cost analysis on there showing the cost to rehab the existing building and then to demo the building and build new construction to rehab would be a cost of approximately 56900 And the demo to build it and uh, reconstruct it to the current uh, um, size would be 42800 So it's an additional cost of $14,000 uh, to rehab uh, to rehab the building versus demo and construction of a new building. Um, I already went through the architectural or the uh, engineer's letter on there. Um, I also have an appraisal from uh, the realtor. So he's basically saying the value of the um, the or the uh, property in its current state with the garage is a million three eighty six, and if the structure was removed, it's the same value. So it's not really adding much value to the property. And then if we constructed a new 
uh, two-story garage and uh, guest house that the value of the property would be a million six ninety nine. So you can see the added value there. <clears throat> the uh, additional items that are on uh, section was it two sixteen I think right one sixteen. Uh, Current owners paid 560 for the property. There's no prior relationship between the current owner and previous owner. Uh, property is not income producing. Uh, the remaining mortgage balance and debt service is unavailable. Uh, there have been no appraisals done on the property in the last two years other than what was done by the realtor. Um, market value of the current property, uh, according to the property appraiser site, um, is 866446 446 and was 674 or 320, uh, 330 in 2021. Um, property appraiser site lists the current value of the garage at $6,560. Real estate taxes paid on the property were $10,652, and in 2021 were $10,512. Property is privately owned. Uh, there's no pro forma available, however, the information provided shows that an investment in a new uh, two story structure would result in a substantial return. Um, Relating to the hardships, uh, the hardship is unique and singular to the subject property. The existing accessory structure was built over 100 years ago at the extreme southeast corner of the property and doesn't conform to current setbacks. In addition, it was built below proper grade and has a substandard slab that's uh, cap poured in a weak attempt to alleviate the issue. Um, hardship is not self-imposed because the structure was constructed prior to the current homeowner purchasing the property. Um, Result of the hardship will not interfere with others because it's an eyesore and having a new structure in its place that matches the fabric of the main home would be much more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, the hardship is in harmony with the purpose of the City of Tampa comprehensive plan to allow homeowners to utilize their property for their own enjoyment while keeping the street view uniform and the fabric of the historic district intact. In approving the demolition of the structure, the homeowners will be able to better utilize their property by having a useful garage and additional space for their family. Uh, it will result in a substantial justice being done by the existing uh, accessory structure is functionally obsolete and not useful in any way other than storage. Uh, there's numerous examples of useful accessory structures in Hyde Park, so to require the homeowners to keep the existing structure is depriving them of something that the rest of the neighborhood is able to enjoy. Um, improving the uh, hardship and demo will allow uh, development that's consistent to the design standards of the historic district. You'll see when we get to the new construction that um, ARC has, has uh, approved that or has agreed that, you know, it's consistent with the design standards. Um, it'll allow a new building that's constructed of much higher quality than the ex existing structure that could be there for another 100 years. Um, and the new structure will be built to the same design standards as the main home and will flow really nice with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, in conclusion, we feel that the narrative supports and surpasses all of the requirements listed in the city code for the board to approve the demolition. Uh, after looking at the rehab required to make this a functional structure, we've come to the conclusion that there will be nothing left of the contributing structure and the resulting cost would represent a financial hardship. So we feel that the only solution is demolition of the existing structure and construction of a new structure. And we hope that you'll come to the same conclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll ask the clerk to reserve the rest of the time for the certificate of appropriateness review if it's, if it's needed. Um, for the portion of the application dealing with the uh, demolition, uh, the staff did determine that the submission was consistent with the requirements of submission under 27116F1 through 3. Uh, for your particular emphasis uh, from this point forward, I would rely on page 3 of your staff report where it talks about the uh, list the demolition criteria in the code, uh, per uh, particularly. Uh, uh, section uh, one and three of that particular page where it talks about the burden of proof 
and the economic hardship. Uh, number two deals with relocation, so there's, uh, that's not applicable to this particular request. Uh, the staff did determine that he did address the uh, code requirements. Uh, this is a finding of fact of the board. If he's met the threshold for demolition and he is claiming an economic hardship, so he's presented information into the record to that fact as well. Uh, I would go ahead and uh, discuss it, ask questions, and then I'm available for any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. <clears throat> At this time, um, I believe we do still ask for public comment in the case of the demolition. So if there's anyone in the audience who would like to come forward, who would like to speak for or against the case in regards to the demolition only. Hi, uh, my name is Steve Parker. I'm actually here for the third um, hearing tonight, but uh, my wife and I actually own the property just to the south of the property that we're discussing. Can you so, spell your name and then your address, please? Sure. Thank you. Steve, and last name is Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R. -E uh, we live at 831 Delaware, but we also own 1107 South Fremont, uh, which is just to the south. So the pictures you saw that show the carport, uh, that carport is on our property, 1107 South Fremont. So uh, we would support this. Uh, I'm surprised that that structure hasn't fallen down. It's very uh, dilapidated and an eyesore. So uh, from the public, we would support tearing it down. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to come forward and speak for or against? Seeing none, uh, we will move on to questions, and I'll start on my left this evening. I have no questions right now. Mr. Myers. I have a general question for staff, please. <clears throat> and I, this is a, a, this relates to the uh, establishment of the historic district. Now, this is a contributing structure, although is there, do we know if there is any data that actually shows that when it was built? Uh, you know, the, the, there's uh, less data about accessory structures than uh, historic buildings. So, you know, while we, while we can project, you know, with, with certainty that the structure was built in 1919, obviously in 1929, that structure either had been, you know, was in a different place or a different structure. So when this was inventoried in the 1980s, structure was there. They did research on uh, the parcels, probably most likely through property records, and determined that it fell within the period of historic significance, pre-war era, and was uh, included as a contributing structure in the inventory. Okay, because it, I mean, when I was looking at the documents, I noticed that it was, that it somehow, between 1929, and it, I get, you said pre-war, but the active uh, time of the district is uh, 1886 to 1933, I believe? Correct. So between 1929 and 1933 is when it should have moved to its current location? Is that? That, you know, that's what the inventory said. So, you know, this commission is charged with looking at 27116. This is not an evaluation of historic classification okay. that, that's in place. And you know, this is, if they wanted to go down that path to challenge that, then they would go to the Historic Preservation Commission. But they've chosen to demonstrate economic hardship under this section of the code. All right, thank you very much. Sure. That clarifies my thoughts. Any other questions at this time, Mr. Moore? No other questions at this time. Mr. Sutton. I have a general question about uh, uh, the existing structure uh, we've not seen any information. Uh, one of the items that are brought up in the documentation is how small it is, how non-conforming it is to contemporary use. Do you have any information as to uh, what is the current width, depth, and headroom for this structure? I don't know if we've got anything on the existing, let me see if I have an existing site plan next to the existing survey. Because it might be on there. Let's 
it says new construction. I don't have it on there. I believe I could probably look it up on the um, property appraiser site because typically they'll give like ex, you know, overall exterior dimensions of that. So if it's something you want me to research, I can check it real quick while y'all That would be discussing. interesting information to have for this evening. Thank okay. you very much. No problem. Any other questions for the applicant at this time? Mr. Sutton? No, I do not at this time. Mr. Taylor. I've got a few and those dimensions will probably help as well. Um, but while you're looking for those, can we pull up the picture of the backyard? the best one I saw to ask the question I'm going to ask. So what I'm, one of the, and this is for the applicant actually, so I'll wait for him. One of the items that was mentioned was the grading of the, the yard based on the elevation of the garage as it currently is. Yes, sir. Obviously, I see a lot going on in this rear yard. There's very little yard space, but my question would be, is there a way to grade the rear away from this garage to alleviate that problem? So the we'd we'd have we'd have to create some kind of swale or something to you know maneuver water away from it, which would be a pretty significant expense because we have to put we have to probably put a pump in in order to drain it away from you know to the to the rear of the actual garage is really the only yard space that's back there. Um, the pool deck itself is, is probably, the pool itself is probably about six feet, I wanna say, six or seven feet away from the structure right now. And obviously we're graded away from the pool towards the, um, towards the garage, but it's, the, the lots, it's, it's, it's pretty low. There's not really any way of raising the, lowering the area adjacent to the garage to be able to grade it away without creating a sump situation. So currently is water draining to the alley or is water draining to the street? It's, it's trying to drain towards the alley. It's kind of draining that direction. So there's no, there's no way for it to get around the garage right now. So that's why it's. That's gonna lead into a question for staff then. Maybe you can answer. If this were a new construction scenario, would we be trying to drain this water to the street or to the alley in this particular area? Well, the stormwater staff would make that determination. Normally, when there is an alley available, the, the drainage is towards the alley. Okay. You have kind of both situations here today, so not, you know, if it That's, were to go new construction, okay. they, may, they may alter that, but I know that on-site retention is going to be the main focus and then any, any excess drainage would be going towards the rear of the property towards the alley. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just to clarify, I think that I've been through a couple of them recently and they've been, stormwater's been big on moving the water to the prop appropriate locations, but they have allowed you to do, um, to run stormwater now to the, to the alley as well. But when it comes up, we address that, you know, through permitting. Okay. So. Um, let's see here. It says 20 by 20 for the garage on the property appraiser site, 400 square feet. All right, so my next question is revolving around the garage door mm -hmm. and the height. Yes, sir. It looked like in that picture there was actually space above that garage door to could have gone higher. It's got a low uh, head height uh, kit on it. So it's in order for the garage door to open. There's a, you know, I'm assuming you're familiar with it. It's got two tracks. So the, the bottom part of the track goes on the bottom section and the top part goes on the top section. So, so could, the, I guess what I'm asking is, is the head height within the garage to be able to put a different style of door that would give a higher head height 
Not not with that particular garage door. The only the only option would be to put like a barn door on it. With a new garage door is what I'm asking. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Do you know the head height of the garage? Uh, I believe it was 86 inches. I'm sorry. Is that clear to the bottom of the next structural member? Correct. Okay. And then these next questions I've got actually revolve around the rehab versus new construction estimate you've got here. Yes, sir. Obviously a big part of this is the economic hardship. So <coughs> some of these line items, I understand some of these line items. <coughs> so like one, for example, you have supervision for rehab, but no supervision for new construction. So I had a note on there, but if you look just up above, it says supervision is included as the project will extend an additional two weeks due to shoring and having to clean up the ex existing materials to reuse again. Okay. And then without getting into too much detail with this new structure size wise, how, how do we compare the two? So the, the new structure, we were required RS60, it'll be uh, 900 square feet. So it'll be 450 square feet, first floor, 450 square feet, second floor. Um, I believe we're doing 23. It's 23 by 26. So you're so that line of questioning without going through each line item. Yes, sir. I'll just pick a couple, but painting and siding, for example, kind of stick out to me. Mm -hmm. We're building now roughly double the square footage, but it's going to cost less to do it. So the, I mean, I can kind of, it's kind of all that's all kind of explained in the, in that, um, in that paragraph above. Um, <coughs> Because in order to, um, this cost not using structure. So the it's analysis of cost to rehab the existing structure and add a second story and expand the building to fit a vehicle. So versus demoing and building the new structure, um, I believe I've got the, the additional cost for siding is is for removal and rehab, and the same thing with the painting. So in other words, we try to remove the existing siding gently you know, keep it intact, strip it, repaint it, put it back. So we're trying to keep it, I'm, I'm comparing, you know, the look of a new building versus making the old building look new again. So that's why your siding and, and painting expenses are more, because there's more work involved in rehabbing the structure. Okay. Is the roofing the same kind of story? Uh, yeah, because you'd end up with demo of the existing roofing and reinstallation of new shingles. Okay. Moving on to the structure report, I saw that basically he's saying based on the structure that's there, we can't go a second floor. Correct. Did the report go into any sort of detail other than what we see here is why I'm asking of what it would take to add to this foundation in order to be able to go up higher over and beyond what's currently here? Yeah, so part of, again, on this estimated cost section in there, basically we'd be shoring up the existing trusses essentially that are there, removal of the existing studs, pouring a new foundation in order to support this additional structure and then reframing everything, removing shoring. So that's, that's the only way to do it would be to, I mean, that's what, that's kind of the point is that we'd have to basically essentially take it apart piece by piece and then put it all, like try to set it all back, you know, and at that point there's really, we're not salvaging anything. We're not saving siding or studs i mean there's studs that they're going to need to be replaced so so what you're telling me though is a structural engineer did say there is a way to salvage no i mean that's that wasn't his opinion i mean i'm just i you know we do this every day so this is this is what we do i do shoring on old homes all the time you know we when we're dealing with um the main homes like it's you know there's there's a lot more involved in extending 
themes to fit editions, et cetera, et cetera. So we're familiar with the aspect of it. I mean, the, you know, the engineer is saying that there's really no, there's nothing that's going to, you know, his commentary is that, you know, given the condition of the existing structure, modification to support a second floor would require replacement of most of the existing structures such that little, if any, of the existing structural elements would remain. So that was his position. But my question is, did he go into any sort of conversation with you or detail in regards to, or was the question even asked, what would it take mm -hmm. for us to I be able to? I didn't discuss that with him myself, okay. no. Mm -hmm. But you're telling me based on your experience, there is a way. It just makes There's always a costly. way, but again, it's, that's, okay. why we're, that's why we're bringing up the economic hardship portion of it. Yes, all sir. Right. That's all I have for now. Okay. I do have a few questions. When did the app or the owners purchase the property? Mm -hmm. Which year? I was looking through the material. I can't find it, so. It's on the appraiser site as well. Give me one second. Uh, 2018. When were the garage door or the new garage door installed? I didn't ask them that question, but I would assume that it was I mean, obviously, sometime between then and now, I, I really can't speculate on that. I'm not sure. When was the concrete cap poured? Same. So there was an there was an existing uh, concrete slab that was there that was poured around the um, the studs. Are there any pictures? Or do you have any images with you of what the garage looked like before the concrete cap was poured? <clears throat> I think that that's the only one that I got. I believe that was prior to, I think. Because that looks like older concrete there to me. She had sent me a few photos. I believe that's that one. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have a site plan of the existing conditions that we could look at really quickly, please? that would include the existing accessory structure. Could be a survey. Yeah, I've got the, I've got the tree and topo that we did, but I don't have it with the, uh, I don't have it with the exist. I may have it on email. I could probably, I can see if I've got one on my email. Let me look through the other stuff that I have. Unfortunately, we took we took the project over from another um, designer who had been working on the project, and I didn't get all of their info. And they had all the they had all the original stuff. So, Dennis, um, do we have anything? No. Um, so I I think the question was asked submitted? by. One of my fellow commissioners already, um, but the wet, the width and the length of the existing accessory structure, did you find that information? It was 20 by 20, yes ma'am. It was 20 by 20? Yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, for staff, I noted on the staff report that there's no previous action listed. If indeed the applicant had changed the garage doors, would that not have come before staff as a, because it is a contributing structure, or yeah, contributing structure within the district? Uh, on our database, it didn't show up. Um, so it may not have uh, been changed with a permit. I'm not sure about that. I'm okay. you know, just speculating at this point. Is that the same with the concrete capping of the floor? It appears would that to be. be it would it would usually come before staff right we would well i'm sorry we would normally do a, a search of the address to produce that part of the staff report so okay did you have any I just the, the cap is inside the garage which they don't typically review it, that portion of if it's if it's a if it's a portion that deals with the structure and in, in, in my position i would consider that more of the structure than an aesthetic thing it would be my understanding that staff would review that at the least when it's a contributing structure. Is that correct? Sorry. Well, 
but is, is that correct, my understanding? Or am I incorrect in my understanding? Uh, if it was strictly interior, then the staff may not have reviewed the poor. I mean, to me, just looking at the picture, it looks like there might have been some exterior as well. So I'm, you know, once again, I'm speculating, but we're not showing anything in our database. Right. Well, the difficulty here is whether or not there, there truly was a wood frame that this was sitting on is the difficult component. Um, are there exterior photos that show that better than what are in this? So I did find the original, let me just go back to your original question. I and I mean the exterior this. condition that yeah, I know. you dug around and, and found. So that's the, this is the original survey that they had. That's the existing survey that they got when they purchased the property. So that's the, that's showing the location of the, okay. of, the of that. And so that's before that. the pool was installed, correct. obviously. Yes, correct, yeah. Um, I will tell you that unfortunately when I was with the art engineer that was out there, I got a phone call. We dug up the foundation. He saw the wood. He took a picture of it for his report. When I, by the time I got back there, it was covered. I did text him earlier today to ask for a photo of that wood foundation, and I did not get it. I could probably try to. And you don't have a copy of that report. That was going to be another question of mine is I did note in the um, written component of the demolition component of part of the application that um, the engineering letter would be submitted prior to the hearing, but I didn't see anything about a it's report. It's here, unfortunately. I just got it, and I will upload it to the record. But the report, you don't have that with the that's, pictures? That's the only report. He, he only sent me this. I did the not letter, get the it. cover Correct. letter. Yes, ma'am. He did not. He just had the, the photos for his edification, just for his records to have. Okay. Um, I have no other questions. Are there any other questions for the applicant or staff at this time? I have none. Thank you very much. None. Okay. So you have five minutes for rebuttal, and then we will close the hearing, the public portion of this. I don't think I have anything additional, um, unless you think that it's important for me to have that photo for you for the of the Wood Foundation, because I can, I can see if I can get a hold of them now. I mean, it's, it's he states it's it, a he, time. It's, it's a no, time I thing. No, I completely it, understand. Yes, yeah. ma'am, and I, I apologize. I, you know, he states it in the letter. It's a certified letter from an engineer. I know that he's got a photo of it. I can absolutely yeah. upload it to the record for sure. Um, but again, I mean, he. This is a, you know, he's he's got a seal on on his letter. Understood. So you know, he's stating that it's it, the, the foundation was wood underneath of the concrete. So. Okay. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and close this, the public portion of the demolition component and we will discuss the case. Um, I would like to open up uh, for the point uh, in part directing to the condition of uh, the accessory structure, but also to the general nature of an accessory structure. Um, this dwelling, this property is of a vintage supposedly the accessory structure is of a similar vintage, though its date is not known. But in its time, it's not unusual to find an accessory utility structure to literally be built frame on a timber uh, foundation on grade. Uh, even to the point where it might have a dirt floor or even a board floor for that matter. Uh, and to have a, 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 for a formal uh, foundation system uh, for some of these is not to be unexpected. Uh, so fast forward 100, 120 years, um, you're dealing with a general situation that's ultimately not kind to the longevity of the structure. And I think that's precisely what we're looking at here. I don't think we're looking at a particular situation where we're looking, uh, we're dealing with some manner benign neglect of the structure. Uh, what we are dealing with here is, I believe, a certain degree of obsolescence. So the question being at that point is, how much do you want to take this take a, take a part on this building to reconstruct in a fashion that makes it more utilitarian, gives it a larger lifespan? Or to, uh, uh, to the flip side of that coin, 
at what point do you start over? Uh, I'd add to, to the discussion a little bit. It seems to me that, that perhaps the garage or accessory structure, even if it w wasn't functioning as a garage, if it was functioning as just a storage shed, um, may have been in a better condition prior to this owner buying it. And it appears that the construction of the pool and the pool deck is at an elevation and a grade that exacerbated drainage to this accessory structure and perhaps uh, contributes to the flooding of the accessory structure because that pool deck is elevated and obviously is, not, is likely uh, pervious. Mm -hmm. So everything sheds towards that instead of, instead of percolating, towards the garage instead of percolating. So I, I'm just looking at it as from a discussion point is that a contributing factor to the deterioration of the? Oh, very certain it is. Of the shed. Very certain that it is, I think. Um, even if it was in, in uh, you know, not intentional. Not intentional. Yeah. You know, and you have the whole site drainage going into that back corner to begin with. Um, siting uh, a, a wood structure on grade uh, of any flavor uh, is death to that structure in this particular location. Uh, its relocation point uh, or construction at this corner is a uh, uh, point really not known at this time. Uh, what we do have is the physical evidence of being there. And you can just see it on the wood siding in itself. I mean, there's so much moisture in it, it can't hold paint anymore. Right. That's the general nature of it all. Yeah. Um, even if you went through some extraordinary uh, uh, water diversion technique at, at, at the grade level, um, so we can move water around the structure. Right. Uh, I don't think that would be really sufficient because we're still dealing with the wetting of the ground, uh, the moisture wicking up, and of course it's in contact with all this wood. With the wood, yeah. And I'm wondering actually if the, uh, uh, the concrete on grade and its cap is actually uh, adding to that situation as well too <coughs> because now we have this cap, that ground is not able to dry out as much as it used to in the Agreed. past. So that is also a contributing factor, uh, unintended consequence. I mean, I know we all we all do not um, enjoy contemplating demolition of a contributing structure, even even such a small, um, you know, accessory structure such as this. Um, There's a couple of things regarding that. I mean. One, the, the statement of unintended consequences. This is the issue when people, owners, go about making changes to things and maybe or maybe it's not reviewed um, because they don't know that they need to do that and it's not caught. And so they go and they do it and they're working with a designer and or contractor that may not understand that they're in a district and they go about and they do their work and maybe they don't have, you know, someone who is really dotting the I's and crossing the T's when it comes to grading <coughs> and those sorts of things and thinking about all the other structures on the property and, you know, that whatever they do in terms of installing a pool or capping off um, an existing floor in a garage have consequences. Unintended consequences cause structures that otherwise might perpetuate for just a bit longer in time to <coughs> see their demise that much quicker. So, and, and the, the point that we hate to see accessory structures, any contributing structures, but especially accessory structures within a district that's the <coughs> only district that we have contributing structures that are accessory yes, structures. And, um, you know, one of the criteria is that it wasn't self-imposed. One could argue that there was a series of events that happened that were instigated by the owner's wants, desires, needs, whatever you might classify it as, but they were self-perpetuated. So, or at least contributing. Right, contributing. And not that there was any um, intent to do harm, but the, the 
unforeseen consequences um, may or may not have caused these issues that we see in this garage. I do also want to state this is not the worst garage that I've seen in this in any of our districts that we've had rehabilitation done and had um, additions. So. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I'm having a hard time with some of these hardships. Um. I do think there's another door or other types of doors that could be used. You could get a standard car, even a smaller SUV in. They have the clearance, in my opinion. There's ways to get a little more creative to even increase that head height a little more um, as we all know but you know the slab itself at some point it was poured and, you know we kind of went through the dates with us you know should there have been something on record because should there have been some permit of record yes because it is structural in a sense um, had some of these items going through proper review we may not be having some of these conversations about grading and water intrusion and different things but that's not where we're at we're at a different point because for whatever reason something wasn't ran through the system as it should have been um, as a contractor i mean do i see damage absolutely do I think it can be rehabbed? I do. Um, is it going to be, you know, going to have a cost? Absolutely. But I don't, I can't say that I agree with these numbers that are comparing back and forth either. Yeah, it, are, are, the, are the added costs, even if they're, you know, these aren't totally accurate, are the added costs to save this structure put new footings underneath it, you know, under underpin it so that you can put new structural members. Or just lift it and build it. And build it and, and, and then put another structure, even build a second floor on top of it. And that was the, um, the are they are they punitive or prohibitive? And that is how I looked at this, not really the right. hard numbers of what is that percentage right. of cost over and beyond what a new structure would be. Right. Um, I feel that in, as we're working in a historic district, we're trying to, pursue, we're, we're trying to pres preserve the architectural aspects of it and the urban fabric. In other, words, in other words, the architecture of individual buildings, individual pieces, because there was, um, because we recognize the quality and the urban fabric because we recognize that the ambience of the neighborhood, which is, it rests on the way that these buildings relate to each other. And in this particular case, this contributing building uh, has, is, not be, is not contributing because of its architecture, I feel. It's contributing because of its place in the urban fabric. And given that, whatever is that there is a desire on the part of the owner to replace it with a near equal piece of fabric, urban fabric, I think that there is, I think that, that this is a, a reasonable request and certainly when we look at this and we think about either raising the building and putting a first floor underneath it or reframing the first floor um, you know when you think about reframing the first floor and you have to tear out the entire you know you have to put in some kind of foundation I trust that the engineer you know the engineer has has said that there's a, a four by four under there someplace, and well, I think that that's 
A, because that's frequently what happens, and B, the guy has you know, sealed it and said, yes, that's what's there. So I'm willing to trust that. Um, I feel that this, is, that this is a very reasonable request, and certainly just without looking at the individual numbers, but looking at the, the effort required to rehab this building versus getting a, a new building which fits, which because of our regulations will fit, will really replace a, a piece of the fabric. Right? Um, I think it's a very, as I said, I think it's a reasonable request. I would like to add to my fellow commissioner's point um, about the potential. There are a, a variety of different ways where uh, a certain amount of renovation can be made on this existing building. And what I'm struck at is that um, we are we are dealing with a, a fairly good sized but still an accessory utilitarian structure. And we're quibbling about the manner of effort and the manner of how things could be done in one way or another. And I'm struck by you know, a point. If we were talking about a primary structure, a primary contributing structure that needs work and love and care and reconstruction, would we be discussing this the renovation needs in the same manner. Would you be willing to accept, you know, a, a, de a total demolition of, of a contributing primary structure because it was a basket case? Personally, myself, I would say, you know, from my point of view, that answer would be no. You know, we need to take a look at what a reconstructive effort would be. And I think that this, this, this um, accessory structure that we're looking at tonight needs that same perspective. I agree with that statement and which is exactly where some of my comments came from. I'm mm -hmm. not looking at it any different. It's a, it's a contributing structure so that's how I'm looking at it. And then I also say okay some of the items that are taken away from its charm are the actual additions that have been made to the building after the fact, the garage door, for example. Um, so that's when I start really visually in my mind trying to tear this apart and go, what did this building look like when it was built originally? What was there for doors or not there for doors? At the end of the day, it's a contributing structure. So, to the eye tonight, is it the most appealing accessory structure I've ever seen in the district? No. But I also have to say that the reason it's not is, and again, from my point of view, is some of the additions that were, have been made after the fact. I agree. They have changed the complete look of the structure. Ergo, my questions. This is not what it looked like when it was deemed to be contributing. And we have, as, as a board and as a department in the city of Tampa, owners have been asked to undo things that change a contributing structure. Well, to his point, if this were a home, a primary structure, I know where this board would be talking and how we would be talking because I've heard it before. But this is case by case and we need to look at this one as this case. And so, it, it, to me it is, it's, it's, an, it's an accessory structure, yes, but I do believe when I strictly look at the hardships, for me, it's really hard for me to justify tearing it down, even though I realize that, yes, it's gonna take some extensive work. Uh, 
I can appreciate that. But it can be done. And I don't think the percentage over and beyond a new construction, especially when you factor in additional square footage potentially, I, I don't think it's going to be that much more to justify the hardship. I guess yeah, I, 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 I agree. I think, you know, is, 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 is it even a hardship that the owner can't have a two-story accessory structure? Is that part of the hardship? Because it seems that's, that's the argument that's been made is that, oh, we don't have a two-story structure and that's, and we're, we're, we deserve to have one or we should have one. We should have one because everybody else, everybody else has, has one. one. But our house only has this historic one-story structure. That, to me, that doesn't factor into being a hardship. Well, because they bought the building, they bought the house with the one-story structure there. Um, <clears throat> And the other thing that I think is, is considerable is it the that's part of the hardship criteria is that the cost of building a second story, you know, as opposed to building a new two story. Um, and I don't think that's that's a legitimate hardship because they're not owed a two story accessory structure. They're owed a they, they, they thought they bought a functional one story, and a, but we think it can be made functional in its current state. And I would argue that it probably was more functional before the concrete cap was. Put the in concrete place. cap sh it would obviously shorten the headroom. Yeah. And, 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 and the door replacement may have lowered the headroom because of the overhead. If they, were, if they weren't overhead doors to begin with, if they were swinging doors or bifolds yeah. or something like that, you'd have more headroom. Well, I'll just speak from my point of view, and, and I'm, I don't even look at the two-story concept versus the one-story concept. I'm trying in my mind to compare apples and apples because there's no guarantee if a new structure came in front of us that it would get approved as a two-story structure because we haven't seen right. that case right. yet to say yes right. or no. That's but I mean, part of the hardship was you couldn't, you can't put a two-story, a second story on this, because it's beyond setbacks already, and it, the second story would not be allowed to be built, or in addition to it wouldn't be built where it is. Nothing else can be done to this structure where it is, because of where it is. Um, all that can be done is either restore it, and keep it as is, or tear it down. Those are the those are the two. Mm. That's right. Relocation is a possibility. Relocation is a possibility, and and putting it back behind the subject, the, the current setbacks, and that would allow a second story to be put on it. And the restraints. Well, are because pool, of pool the might be in it, the in restraints are because of the addition of other construction yeah. since yeah. this was originally built. Yeah. As a proposal, we've not yet seen something of that nature this evening, so we don't know right. what the range of possibility yeah. is with that. Yeah. You know, I could see where there'd be a plan A, B, C, and D. All we've seen tonight is a plan A. Anyone willing to entertain a motion at this time? <laughs> If I may, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Um, you know, in listening to the conversation, I did hear that there was sort of a desire for more information on alternatives. So if that, if that is a desire, that if you feel that you want more information to ensure that all the alternatives have been considered, you can request that of the applicant and have the case continued at his approval. That's up to the applicant. But I did want to put that out there based on some of the conversation I was hearing. So do we need to ask the applicant? Will you? I think the applicant would need to ask you, but um, that's, you know. Well, did the applicant know that that was a possibility? And it wasn't sure if I was allowed to talk still. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like there's some additional information that's needed. And I feel like we probably need, 
you know, if, if nothing else, they, I'm, I'm sure that they've got some photos of the property when they purchased it to see what it looks like. And I'd also, I, you know, I'm, I'm unfortunately blindsided by the fact that if they didn't permit a garage door and or capping this and or whatever, um, you know, I want to, I need to research that myself and see if that was actually the case. Um, in relation to the discussion about the pool, obviously the pool wouldn't have been permitted. That would have gone through a stormwater review situation as well, where the pool wasn't creating an additional situation. <coughs> I'm sorry, just need sorry. To, so, do you want a continuance? At yes, this point? please. Yeah, because we're okay. getting sorry. into we're Apologies. getting into testimony yep. now, Absolutely. and we can't Understood. do that. Sorry. Thank no, you, Dennis. No problem. Um, if 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 that's the case, then our first opportunity. I'm not sure about your availability. Would be May third. We have room on that agenda. Is that acceptable, please? Okay, so that would be Wednesday, May the 3rd, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. I have a motion. Yeah, I move to grant a continuance in the case of uh, ARC 23-122 located at uh, 1802 West Jetnav uh, to the uh, May 3rd public hearing at 5.30 p.m. I have a second, please. I second the motion. All in favor, please state aye and raise your hand indicating so. Aye. aye. Motion carries. And good evening, Commissioners. Dennis Fernandez, Architecture Review and Historic <laughs> Preservation Manager. On item number two, which is ARC 23155, to the property located at 612 South Willow Avenue, located in the Hyde Park Local Historic District. We go to the uh, Alma once again. See, the uh, subject property is located on uh, South Willow Avenue, uh, north of Swan Avenue, south of West Dillion Street. See the uh, 1929 Sanborn map. This is a contributing structure. Uh, there is uh, showing a, uh, an accessory structure uh, in the rear, which uh, is no longer in existence. Uh, there is an alley. This is the front elevation. Did want to point out that um, there will be a request to introduce a driveway, an apron and a driveway on the left or north side of the structure. There is a tree, as you can see, that's present. Natural Resources has commented on that tree and does not object to the removal based on its condition. Some details of the porch and the windows on the primary structure. Moving around a little bit to the north side, looking down where the proposed driveway would be introduced. Moving on to the south side. Because this is a new construction on site, I want to show some of the details of the windows and the trim. See the uh, venting and the uh, overhang with the brackets. Some more details of the soffit and the brackets and the siding. Moving around to the alley. This is the rear of the structure. You see there is a, a non-contributing uh, screen, aluminum screen or wooden aluminum screen enclosure that's already been approved for demo by staff. Moving down Swan, uh, I wanted to show sort of the rhythm of curb cuts and driveways along uh, this portion of Willow. So this is a Swan moving north 
on the east side. Moving beyond the property of Front Swan, you have this uh, curb cut uh, for parking. Continue moving toward the north. It's another cut here for the alleyway that runs uh, east and west. Moving down the block, you have a, a combined driveway and parking for two structures that they share a common apron. This is a structure that does not have a curb cut. And another. Going back to Swan on the uh, west side of the street, moving up the, just beyond the, the front of the uh, church parking, you have this uh, alley uh, access. Moving on, you have a, a uh, access through a portico share. Same with the next structure. Continuing moving north, you have another shared apron with two different uh, access points. So that concludes the photo essay. I'll ask the uh, applicant to come to the podium and present their um, application. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Hi, good evening. I'm Maria Borromeo. And uh, Ricardo Borromeo, uh, we're the owners. We're the owners of 612 South Willow. Um, So here's the um, schematic drawings of our, our plan for the carriage house. This is the side plan, main house. This deck is actually existing. This one is not because we had that structure that we demoed a couple weeks ago. It was destroyed by, a, we had a tree right about here and it fell back in 2021. So after the battle with our insurance, finally, we, you know, we got the permit, we demoed um, a couple weeks ago. The, the structure was um, not secure, it was like tilted. So finally, it's now clear. And now the property, just to share this, this is how it looks right now when that structure, um, got, after the structure got demoed. So that, that structure was actually here in front of that um, French doors to the left. Okay. Moving forward. Um, so we'd like to request a certificate of appropriateness for the um, construction of our carriage house, which is located here. Um, the structure is going to be 750 square feet. Dimensions are going to be 20 feet wide by, I think, 18 feet, I'm sorry, 18 feet, 9 inches this way. It's going to be a two-story. First floor is going to be um, a, an office for my husband because he works from home three times a week. Um, second floor is gonna be our guest house because we have family visiting every year from different parts of the world and whenever they visit, they stay. And we don't have room in our main house. So, elevations. This is the west elevation. This is going to be the view from the deck. Um, that's going to be shared. It's going to be in between the main house and the carriage house. So this is going to be a French door with side lights to make it like look a little wider and make it look like um, a garage door. So, you know, it's a carriage house. So, and this will line up with this will line up with our driveway that we are putting here. So it's going to line up. So this driveway is going to butt into this area over here. 
which is the carriage house. The windows are all going to be, we're going to mimic what we have on the main house. You've seen the photos earlier. I added more pictures. I got some pictures of, th this is like, um, these are windows from the front, from the front porch. So we're, we plan to, um, to have the same style, but we're gonna use the al aluminum clad, aluminum clad windows. And I brought a sample here with me. East elevation is backing up the alley. Um, this is actually going to be, um, it's drawn differently, but it's going to, I want to uh, copy the, I want to mimic the, the bathroom window that we have on the main house. So it's going to look like a mini version of what I showed you earlier. So this is, this is the, um, the bathroom window from the main house. So we're going to make it exactly like that and approximately about the same size as well. Over here at the north elevation, um, I added more windows. Um, hang on, let me see, where's the other? So as you can see, the scale of the windows is going to be about the same as how we have it on the main house. They're about 30, approximately 36 inches wide, which is what we have in the main house. And I'm going to have several of them in each room, or at least in this case, it's only on the guest house. Because the first floor is going to be, yeah, we plan to make it like an office and, and kind of like um, an extra living room space so we can put like a TV. Because currently we don't have a TV. We, I mean, our TV is very limited to like a small size because of all the windows that we have. Um, material. The siding is going to be a hardy, we're going to use a hardy board. Material. Yeah. Siding is the hardy board material. What else do we need to discuss? Um, as you can see, the brackets, we would, we'd like to um, replicate what we have in the main house. So the detail that we have that we, that we, have, um, that we showed earlier, um, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to, the roof will be shingles, just like what we have on the main house. Um, Pretty much, we're just gonna we're we're gonna make it like a mini version of what we have, um, of a mini version of our 1921 bungalow, craftsman bungalow. Our fence is gonna be because we just we redid the fence after Irma, and we we did all wood, so we plan to it's still in good shape, but we plan to use the same thing for the back. And then just like um, what was mentioned earlier in the beginning that we are requesting to, to put like a driveway from here. And then this is gonna be like, I think a parking pad because I think um, by code we need to have like um, two parking spots, like parking spots for two cars. 
So we intend to put it here on this side. We will probably redo the deck um, after we build a new structure. So everything will marry well. And because um, I don't like different levels too. So we'll probably have to redo it, modify it a little bit. And that's it. That's the plan. Okay, we'll move on to the staff report. Mr. Fernandez. Commissioners, the uh, staff does find this application consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines for the plan submitted. Uh, there is one letter uh, in your packet that is uh, for public comment. Um, we did uh, perhaps need a little more detail, um, some of which could be delegated to staff, such as the scoring uh, on, on the, uh, the driveway and on the ribbons. We'd want that to be historically scored, a pretty typical comment from us. Um, would like to kind of uh, have the applicant put the site plan up and show where the uh, air conditioned compressors are going to be for both the uh, principal structure and the accessory structure. I believe there might be currently be located in the area of the driveway. Uh, she did mention that the decking may be um, remodeled at some point. We would handle that subsequently. Uh, she talked about the fencing. Uh, we did uh, mention those window proportions. Uh, she did talk about the one window. Um, the, the windows that face the street, I think, are more historically accurate. Some of the other ones are a little smaller in, in proportion, but take into account their, their location. Um, we heard about the brackets and the uh, railing, but I didn't see any details on those. So. Those are always sort of the, the details that we, we like to have. Uh, if this is approved, it will be subject to the approval of design exception one to raise the height to 22 and a, a 22 feet six inches. And um, although she did call out the materials, I didn't see a wall section, so that usually helps us with installation details a little bit as well. I'm available for, available for any questions. Thank you. Move on to public comment. If there's anyone in the audience who'd like to come forth and speak either for or against the project, you may do so at this time. And a reminder, when you do come up, to state your name, spell your name, and give your address. Thank you. Hi, I'm James Smith, J-A-M-E-S-S-M-I-T-H. I'm at 609 South Willow, which is across the street from uh, Trina and Rick. We love their project. We think it would really add to the beauty of the street and then we're excited about their driveway concept the addition because our driveway is across the street from theirs and willow traffic down by the church is horrible traffic parking it would be a nice addition to have that to facilitate the but we think it's a great project thank you thank you anyone else in the audience who'd like to come forward no Seeing no one else, we will begin asking questions this time starting on my right with Commissioner Taylor, if you have any. I'm going to stick to just a couple of questions here. One is on the uh, stem wall, or it looks like you have a foundation wall at the bottom. What is the finish on that, or is that siding going to go? Can you show me us that detail? Yes. Yeah, I think that's one. Sure. Probably. Yeah. Can you read that? Now? Going up. It's hard to read. Can you pull it up? Just can a you see bit? it? No. Just pull it up a little bit because like he, he was questioning the foundation. Yeah. So. I guess what I'm trying to question, trying to figure out here, per this drawing, it looks like you've actually got 
what I would call a band board there at the bottom. But I'm assuming that's not going to go all the way down to the grade level. So I'm just trying to figure out what you're doing there to transition from grade to whatever siding you're using. Good question. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they will have to, we'll have to get with our structural engineer and what the plan is. So is it, I mean, what I'm seeing here, you're not looking for an elevated foundation, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't to think it's elevated, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be lower than our main house. That's why I had to mention that the deck probably needs to, I have to modify it, needs to get, get lower because the, my French doors are gonna be out swing. So my, my doors will not function right if I have the deck butting up to it. So I have to like lower the deck and have a step up okay. to reach the uh, main house. If you'll shoot or scoot this uh, over just a little bit, go back to the window detail in this and just try to, I wanna see the depth. It looks like it's done correctly, but. Oh, the elevation? No, no, no the, the, wall, the wall detail. Oh, the same. The same, there was oh, the same, same drawing, okay. just the next detail. So it looks like it's like it should be, and I see the sample, and it's actually a really nice looking window. So, um, I'm going to leave some of the others to these guys because I know that there's some coming pertaining to items they always ask about. So. <laughs> Uh, being subservient to the main dwelling on the site, um, in some cases even diminutive. So I've got a couple scale items I'd like to talk to you about. You're posing hardy siding for the finish of your new building. Mm -hmm. What is the exposure? What is the height of the lapse? Um, I think what my architect wrote down here, can you read that? I can't read it. I think it's four inch. Can you like zoom it in? <clears throat> to further the question, I think it's, it's, four, it's four inch. Four inch reveal. Okay. With um, four inch reveal with, yeah. and then it says smooth finish. And is that to match? your dwelling? It's not four inch like what we have in the main house. It's probably like five. Oh, so there is a difference yeah. between the Does two. it have to be five? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, okay. it's one of those little sticking points. Very often we see um, accessory structures being slavishly modeled after their original okay. uh, dwelling structures. And um, what is important is that um, that there is a differentiation between what is the new structure, what is the accessory okay. structure, versus what is the original main structure on the property. And that change in height of the lap mm -hmm. of your siding goes a long way to doing that. It's probably five and a quarter for my for the main So you're looking house. at something on the nature of four. So yeah, you know, for, we're looking for, at four for, for the, the new accessory. one. Yeah. Related to that, you have an overhang for your roof. Yes. Uh, I believe the number I, I see feet. is two foot. Yeah. Is that the same on your uh, dwelling structure yes. as well too? Yes, approximately. Uh, one of the things you might want to consider is shortening that up a little bit because you are dealing with a, a more diminutive structure. Okay. Okay, and that would also reduce the scale of your brackets as well too. I can, so these two elements together okay. would look smaller and different from your main building as well. Okay. I think that'd be something worth taking a very close look at. I understand your point. What you're doing with your foundation is subject to change. It's probably gonna be lower. It's probably gonna be finished or built into somewhat of a different manner. That will have to be coordinated in some manner with staff, I would think. What would be appropriate um, instead of two feet if I make it smaller? Uh, it would be your choice. I could see easily 18 inches. 18 inches 16, is good 18 enough. 18 inches, something in that range. Okay. But I would look at, I would have you and your architect take a look at that in terms of how it proportions with it, how the shadow lines fall on your building. 
uh, because you know obviously a deep overhang has a deep shadow to mm -hmm. it. Uh, you could make it so shallow that there isn't a shadow line, mm -hmm. and that doesn't look right either. So that's something to take a look at. Okay. I do applaud the fact that you've set your windows back and your doors back, so that creates that nice shadow line, the same thing that we see on, on our older structures. Uh, that is also normally a sticking point, but uh, you pegged that one, so that's good for us. Uh, that's all I have for right now. Mr. Myers? Um, have you set the finished floor level yet? Say that again. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a lot to... Uh, the, have you set the finished floor level because that, you know, it, it's a it's a carriage house, but it's going to be occupiable space, so it can't be on grade. You want to raise it up a little bit. Okay. And and it may be in your neighborhood. I'm not. I'm really not familiar with what your, what the required elevation would be. But that will determine also. You said you have to deal with your deck. Yes. And so you know that you have some work to do there, and it could be that your stem wall, the area of the before your you know, below where the mm -hmm. below where the siding stops, um, that also becomes more or less apparent. Okay. You know, so th that's a, an issue that needs to be worked out. Because I was, I thought the maximum height that we need to get that we need to um, to do is like twenty two feet and six inches for for um, a structure like this. And is that I'm I'm seeing staff is is nodding, okay. and so I guess that's correct. And that's, that's irrespective of what their finished floors need to be. Is that correct? Dennis Fernandez with staff. The, the height is measured from finished floor up. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. But, and, you know, I live in a low area, so I'm just used to seeing all this stuff set way up. In general, is Hyde Park high enough so that they can be relatively close to grade? Okay, thanks. Yes. Okay. It, it actually would depend on where you are in Hyde Park, so I'd be very careful. But, yeah. but Willow, generally where they are, doesn't flood as bad as some other areas and stuff. But again, you would have to work with your architect mm -hmm. to understand what the implications are if you do raise your, your finished floor elevation. Mm -hmm. I think, or lower it. Right, right. If you adjust your floor elevation in such a way that you, to accommodate your needs, wants, desires, that sort of thing, it is always something that you need to review with your designer, whoever's signing off on your on your design. Okay. Okay. And um, you have an alley behind your house. Yes, we do. Is it an active alley? In other words, the, do the tr yes. garbage trucks go down there? Yes. Uh, and so why was the decision made to make a new curb cut in your in the front because originally we were thinking of parking in the back that's my gasparilla parking i i really i actually have like a small um space mm -hmm. but then when i discussed this I we believe, had a call with transportation yeah we had a call with transportation they said there's, a, there's like a setback required and then uh, we didn't meet that setback was that the setback was required even for the for a parking slab for the parking yeah, yeah. So there is enough room just to park the car and then be off the alley, but then there's a required minimum lamp. They don't have the required backup. Right. You always have to factor in backup. <laughs> and where do you, where, previously where did you park your car? Street. In the street? Yeah. Ooh, that, it is tough. Mm -hmm. It is. We park in the street, but then we also park in that empty space, uh, like by the screen pool. We only park there during Gasparilla. Oh, okay. Or when there's an event and someone's parking in front of our house. So that's mm -hmm. like our little secret, spot. Secret, secret, <laughs> little secret place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, no further questions. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Prokop. Uh, I just have one or two things. Um, have you, could you put up the, the main house, a photo of the main house? A photo of the main house. Do you have a photo of the main house? Just you want to see the front or the back? I, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the rafters and how they're treated at the ends of the rafters and how you're doing the okay. carriage the house rafter. rafter ends. Okay.
I love chronic wings. I got to get through to get to it. I can't. I, I if I I can't read the ones on these. Okay, so that's that's on the gable. How about the ends of the rafters? Do they have do they have a board? Or are they exposed? They're exposed. I could find a picture. Yeah, you can see behind the flag. I have a picture of my house. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, there's a. Okay. Well, no, but they I hit a fascia board. They, they have do a fascia board. Fascia board. Okay, so they do have a fascia board. They're exposed rafters. And they have a fascia board. Correct. Okay, that's what I was looking at to okay. see. Okay. Um, and the, that's the same detail that was proposed on the on the wall section that I did see that you guys had. Okay, that was one of my main questions. Um, yes. And uh, Dennis brought this up also, but the proportions of the other smaller windows, the two that are facing the street, mm -hmm. basically, are the right kind of height versus width, and the other ones are just kind of dumpy, short. Um, would you consider making them a little narrower and deeper, and maybe even pairing them, These, the other pairing smaller, them. smaller windows? Let me see where yeah, it's... Just some way to, to, to have them more reflective. They're much more of a vertical proportion, a two to one even, two to one height to width, um, roughly. Can you put your elevations back up yeah. since we're talking about them? And then yeah. So you're talking zoom, about these two? zoom out so we can see all of them together. Thank you. I understand the bathroom window wanting to be you know, a smaller little baby thing. And, and I get that. But you see how the, the, the two windows that face the street are basically twice as tall as they are um, wide in that relationship. They're, they're skinnier, and, and, and the, the other ones just look like squat little nothings. And that I just would rather see those be narrower windows and a little longer. Um, would you, I, I know that was one of staff's con comments also, and, and I'm finding them to be a little bit on I know there's countertops in the kitchen for yeah. instance on the second floor and one of the other windows on the side is into the bathroom I, un I understand that um, it, it's just maybe maybe they just get skinnier if they have to be that height they just get thinner do you narrower. okay so I if you want From me a proportion standpoint we can keep the height, make it skinnier. Do you want me to add another one, like making it the dog? I'm, I'm not telling you. I, I just see the portions are, are wrong as okay. they are now. And they, they could be done, again, with your designer sure. or with your architect, because we're not designing your house okay. or your accessory building. But they could solve that problem. Okay. If they yeah. told what the problem is, they can solve it. A smaller okay. window of the same proportion. Okay. <laughs> okay and yeah. If you need more light, perhaps. You add another one. Yeah, add another window or right. okay. you combine two windows together in an opening. Any one of a number of different operations. Right. All right. Just just write Noted. that note down and tell you tell your designer we need to just fix the proportions of the smaller windows. That's it. Sure. Otherwise I have no other questions. Okay. Um, could you talk a little bit about the AC unit that's in the lower right? Uh, yep. So that I would assume is for both the first and second floor of yes. the accessory structure, correct? correct? So it is on a pad on the ground. Yes. And correct. it's under the stair? Under the it's stair. under the stairs. Okay. Could you put your site plan up, please? And then can you zoom into it, please? Good, and then just scooch it up just a tad. Thank you. So uh, the AC for the primary structure, and I kind of noted this before I realized that it was on the staff report. You see where your AC unit is for your primary structure? Yes. And then you see where your new parking pad is going and your strip? Yes. There does appear to be a conflict there. Do you have images of that side of the house with your AC unit? in view with you no I'm okay this is one location that definitely your design team needs to look at and figure out whether or not this can actually happen because either you need to rethink where the parking pad is or the ac unit 
is going to need to be relocated. And that is not something in your budget, I'm pretty sure, at this point, right? So, um, and we know what Stickler's transportation is, and yes, we do insist on the parking pad to be behind the primary facade of the primary structure. So it doesn't look like you have much wiggle room based on what I'm seeing in the drawing here. So that is one comment. Um, in, terms of the, in terms of the backyard deck situation, um, I just want to clarify, at this time, you are not asking uh, to uh, incorporate the addition of the deck in your permit for what you're about to move forward with, should we approve it tonight. Is that correct? It's part of the project. So do you, you plan on implementing it as you build this accessory structure? It would be done at the same time? It's probably going to be last because... But it would yeah. be part of this project? I think so, yeah. Okay. So do you have any details of what the deck, how it's going to be uh, built, and then the materials that you intend on using? No, we don't have any... No details, details and no and no... Yeah, just a site plan. Right. Okay. What about the stairs and the railing? Do you have drawings for the stairs and the railing that could show us how they intend on? Um, I don't have those details. I mean, the only details we have is this cited on the elevation. And what do the notes say? Mm, can you read that? I can. Painted, pressure treated, guardrail, two by two vertical slats. Four inch max. Is that clear or clear, or clear spacing? Clear spacing. It's hard to read. And the material would be wood, correct? Pressure treated wood, wood yes. Yeah. Okay. Madam right. Chair, yes. if I might. Um, the deck is, is not a part of the advertised review for this evening. Oh, it so isn't. Anything okay. to do with the deck will have to come back in to the okay. staff. Okay. All right. Let's make note of that. I'm sorry? Yeah. Um, do you have any information on the doors that you're installing both at the second floor and at the first floor? Yes. What, what material, the style, if you have imagery, that's even very helpful. So we're, I'm going to use... Um, uh, Aluminum clad. Oh. We'll need to, yeah, okay. sorry. Is that the windows? We're going to use um, Windsor. Those are the windows. Do so you have the doors? The doors is going to be the same. They have French doors that are. Do we have an image yeah. of that? Okay. There you go. And are you going to do divided lights like that? Yes. Because this is what I have in the main house. Okay. Exactly like this. Um. Can you pull that back away from the elevations? Because I didn't think the elevation showed that. Just move it off the elevations for a sec, the cut sheet. Your, your elevations are up. Can you just move the cut sheet off? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so they're different. Yes. Which one do you intend in inst well, installing? I, was, I wanted to match it from the main house, which is exactly this. Would you consider what's shown on your elevation? Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, when you say carriage house, there's something you evoke with that. And so what you show in your elevations is more evocative of okay. what a carriage house would have looked like. And what, what, you, what is clouded in the cut sheet is yeah. not what we would typically envision with that. So um, it's just more in keeping with the historic okay. nature of that we'll, idea. We'll make it that way. Well, you don't have to make it that way ex exactly, but something closer to that. Sure. Yeah. No, because like I thought I I thought we had to make it like a mini version of the main house, so I had to, you, you know, look have, at different options. You never have to make it a mini version. It doesn't okay. have to be exactly and in in, in this could some. Be glass and steel. Pardon? This yeah, could it could be glass, glass and steel. steel. <laughs> it could be a modern little box back. Which I have done in the district, but yes. that's another day. Um, anyway. 
Okay, um, hardware and lighting, do you have cut sheets for those? Do you know what you intend on using at this time? Um, I don't have, we haven't hardware gone that far lighting. yet when okay. it comes to selection of lighting and hardware. Okay. okay. And then... I'll probably get something that's really quaint looking, like mo like gas lamp looking. Okay. Just like how I have it in the front. All right. My front uh, door. Let me make sure that we got everything so we got. Um, can we go back to the site plan and then can you show us where all the fence is going that you are installing as part of this project? I understand you have some existing fence, but are you adding fence and or gate locations? Yes. Can you just show us with your finger where that might be? Okay, so these are all existing. Okay. It actually extends all the way up to here. Okay. Um, but now it's actually demoed. This is, I also have fencing all the way up to here. Okay. So I think the plan is to let it butt up to, to the house. Okay. And then, and then we'll have a gate here and another gate here, and then it just goes around. So you're going to, you're going to enclose that. You're going to leave that little yes. square open for your height, your Heidi parking yes. spot. Okay. And then yes. um, at the front of the house where the new drive is, is yes. there a gate there? Where is that fence line going to be? The fence is honestly, um, this parking pad, we can probably bring it up to here. Uh -huh. This lines up with my front door. And then 36 feet. Because it's going to be 36 feet by 9 feet. Right. So it's probably going to be, because I think, yeah, my art, I didn't see this. I just caught it now. My architect made it, like, far back. So actually, I could probably bring it back, like, another... I don't know, maybe four feet going this way. And then we'll probably put the fence here. Um, so when you have an AC unit, it has to be screened. It has to either be behind a fence or landscaping. So if you do put the fence behind it, you'll need to think about screening the AC unit, barring it being relocated because it conflicts with your parking path. <laughs> right. But just so you know that that would have to Should we, happen uh, maybe we can relocate the ac yeah we yeah, like if we have to like we'll like relocate it and then put the fence like, behind it okay and then in terms of the gate would that be opaque as well would it match the fence and the gate that you should yes. before or something so, different? Like so this is this is actually a picture of the existing gate on that side behind that is the ac unit okay so it's going to look exactly like that because okay. we have that all around the house already. Okay. So we got that. All right. I have no other questions. Any other questions for the applicant or staff at this time from the commission? I've got one for staff revolving Sorry. around this AC unit. Um, looking at the conflict, I really only see one viable option if they do have to move it and it's the other side of the house potentially do they have to come in is that something that can be approved as far as the screening and all at the staff level or is that something that they would have to uh, we would handle it at a staff level because okay. it's not going to necessitate a variant so Just we would kind of sure work with them these things usually get sort of flushed out in the permitting uh, process it, it, it does like a conflict and if they move it straight back they get outside the footprint of the home if they they've got a deck in the way it's just they start running out of space to put it so there will be some screening issues but as long as that can be handled as staff then yeah i'm more i'm more concerned about impact well car <coughs> car hitting the ac yeah yeah yeah, or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or parking next to it not being able to open the car door exactly yeah any other questions for the applicant or staff? No? All right, you have five minutes for rebuttal, so you have the opportunities to add anything in that you feel like you might need to. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome, thank you. Thank you. We'll go ahead and close the public portion and we will discuss the case.
I'm, I'm sad to, to see that tree go because it looks like it's giving a lot of shadow that was just on the screen that he took away. <laughs> um, but um, but if if uh, if uh, the city tree folks say that it's diseased and it's not any good and it can take out, it can come out. Then um, I just hate to see trees come down, especially ones that look like as big as that one. I agree, but usually when it's one that they feel like it's worth fighting for, they're sitting here. To They'll sell be here, us. right? So yeah, I agree. Um, no, I mean, I think, I think, you know, the the ribbons and adding adding ribbons back to a house that didn't have ribbons, I think, is is great. I mean, it's a, it's a nice character as you're going down the street to see those little concrete ribbons uh, alongside the house. I like that. Um, the AC units problem. Um, the elevation of the building itself is still in question. What, how high above grade is the first floor of that building? It's not defined. We have no idea. No, that, that, has, that has to be determined with their designers. Uh, there's going to be a modulation between where that building is and where it is on grade versus what's happening to the deck versus the existing height of the existing building. And, and then the stairs. And then how it all Then how new how stairs all getting together. into the to, into the new house, to the new um, carriage house. Um, do you get into it from the deck? How do you get onto the deck from the grade? You know that, or do you only go from house to carriage house mm -hmm. and not go to grade? I don't know, but that stuff all has to be worked out. I think if they actually had a real firm at nature's idea as to where that is in terms of an elevation, we'd be also seeing a deck as this part a part of this proposal as well too, because that's going to be a determining factor. Yeah, you know, it's like how many steps from grade or from the house to the deck to the right. deck to the lower deck, and the list goes on and on. Okay. Um, otherwise, I think yeah, I don't I don't have any concerns really approve approve it. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, there's some tweaking, there's some coordination issues yeah. that need to be taken care of, but I think that I think that there's a, um, I think they're really, you know, ready to move forward with this. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's fine. I'm going to ask this just because I really thought there would be a, a few more questions revolving the windows. Um, I heard your questions, but the front elevation to me is very attractive, yeah. especially, especially for accessory structure. Right. Mean, yeah. The, the, the front door it just is, is very inviting to me. Yeah. Um, now the rest of the house, the, the windows themselves look a little out of perspective, out of kilter to me as far as just from a design perspective, but I'm staying in my lane as a contractor here and, and not as a designer. So if you guys didn't have any concerns with that. Oh, we had concerns. Oh, everybody he did. asked the questions. Um, everybody did. He asked the, he asked the right questions. I, I, and, and I think, I think Mr. Sutton also said something about proportion to scale. You feel like it should have been more of more windows is kind it of where. Be. Well, well the, the walls, those walls had kitchen counters on them uh -huh. and uh, a built in in the ground floor. I mean, like we see that but be the floor plan that there's limitations on how they want the building to function versus what windows could be used. Uh, or how many, I mean, and of course you don't want too many windows facing the alley, and, you know, if any. That one I understood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if, you know, the main building is a three to one proportion, then you know, regardless of how big the window is, they should be three to one proportions right. going forward. Right. And, and having that illustration, I'm a very visual person, so that would probably change the impact for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, that's that. I was think really that could be worked out. I think that's just oh, yeah. you know. Looks so like the front elevation was spot on as far as. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yep. But like you said, you know, the, you could build an accessory structure like that, and it could be a glass, steel, and Absolutely. concrete, you know, jewel box, and have nothing to do with the original building, original house whatsoever. Absolutely. And not, I just not many people get that, I guess. Um, it, it would have it to have right. something to do with the original building. No, it doesn't. And it's proportion. No, it doesn't. I need oh, to no. take you oh, on a. Uh, I need to take you on a trip. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't at all. Uh, it can just we'll be. It, back it just trip. has to be of the uh, of of a scale that that is, maintains the neighborhood fabric. And 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 the craft the craft of making also works with the district. So. Right. I think I think we were talking about the same thing that I'm. I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> but all right, 
Who took notes? Um, is anyone willing to entertain a motion at this uh, time? Before, well, I, before we get to, to, the, to the motion, um, I have a problem with the fact that they're adding a curb cut because I feel that the curb cuts that have been added since that were added, say from you know from 1933 until 80, whatever it was when it when this happened, have have been to the detriment of the urban fabric of the district. And so, I think that we should consider that. Now, it's really unfortunate that they don't have parking places. I don't know how long they've been in the house, but they've been parking on the street, and nobody likes to park on the street. Do. You do? <laughs> but I don't live on their street. <laughs> yeah, I their mean, street's an even harder one to park on the street. Yeah, theirs is hard. Yeah. Mine is not. <laughs> but this is a part of the urban fabric that I think is worth maintaining. And I'm, and you know, there are, if everybody in New York parks on the street, or, or they, you know, they pay an outrageous amount and park in the garage, and they're always they're moving their car and all that stuff. <clears throat> I want to point that out. Well, um, in in many of our historic neighborhoods, whether or not they're in a district or not, you have both. You have both curb cuts on the street, mm -hmm. and then you have alley parking or parking from the side street. And even in this district, there's a mix. There's a good mix. And I remember not that long mm -hmm. ago, we had a project come before us. And I believe every street on that house, except for the one that came before us, had a curb cut. And they were the only ones that decided to go from the alley. So they actually were not conforming with their particular block. Um, but when you look at the district as a whole, and you saw it on the photo essay. On his neighborhood. On the photo yeah. essay, there were existing curb, curb cuts for ribbon drives, historic ribbon drives. Now, the curb cuts might be more of our today's standards, which are much wider flares. Historically, they would have been almost completely orthogonal. They might have had a little kick here and there, depending on the particular location. But um, so. I don't have an issue with the, this one having it. I mean, there's enough in the historic record for this particular street and block for it to, to fit in. That's my opinion. Right. If it was a solid slab all the way, I think I would have some serious problems with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But being it's not, it, it looks to flow. I can appreciate your comment though and, and why so I mean I guess it is something to consider um, but the street already does have the mm -hmm. same type of curb cuts up and down it and so it's like are we really changing that urban fabric or not we are for this one particular property but are we for the neighborhood for the street um, and I'm not so sure that we are, it, from my perspective. I don't. I don't think it, in this particular street block neighborhood, adding another curb cut is is not a detriment to the fabric of the neighborhood, because they're all over the place. I mean, I. In my opinion. I lean towards. I hate that we're losing, the tree because. I think many people buy into these areas just as much for the, for the landscaping canopy. and the canopy as they do for the, yeah. the homes. But again, with natural resources saying it's this tree okay. can come down, who are we to say it shouldn't? And there's no one else here to dispute that either. So, I mean, considering you know they already have uh, you know. A certain regard for failing trees in the first place. <laughs> yeah. One already took one out their took out uh, <laughs> <laughs> their their rear deck and porch. So yeah. I think it's a prudent measure to check these things out in the first place. Um, particularly with our windstorms and in their situation with the uh, insurance companies, um, I think that was a prudent move for them to get checked out. 
So anyone willing to entertain a motion at this time? Let me try this, please. Okay. I move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 23-115 for the property located at 612 South Willow Avenue in the Hyde Park Historic District with the following conditions. Uh, one, that the design exception for the increased height to 22 foot 6 inches be granted by the City of Tampa. And that the following items are coordinated with staff for their various details. And I would cite the coordination of doors and their paneling and lights, window proportions, pavement scoring, the finish of and the height dimension four of the stem wall foundation of the accessory structure, the coordination of eave and soffit depths, hardware and lighting, and finally the coordination of the conflict between the parking pad and the AC pad and AC unit. Is there any addition? No, I think that was it. Because upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Hyde Park design guidelines for the city of Tampa for the following reasons in that the scale but the proportion of the proposed uh, uh, carriage house is consistent with examples found throughout the district and is compatible with the existing fabric of the dwelling on site. I have a second. I'll second. Um, before we move forward with the vote, um, if you could come back to the dais, we just asked we just like to ask that you under if you understand the conditions that we put forth in the motion. Yes. yes. You understand. Them. Okay. Um, so all in favor, please state aye and raise your hand, indicating so. Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Commissioners, if yes. I could just request a five-minute recess. Yes. We are in recess for five minutes.